Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Workout Wednesday. This week, we are in week 17, and we are in the final week of our color month. We are going to be creating a custom theme in Power BI using a number of different tools. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the solution now and let us know in the comments if you have any questions. If you download the solution file from the website, you will see that I included a list on a hidden tab of the steps that I took to complete this. So some of these are reflected in the blog post, but some of them are not. Um, so essentially what we're gonna walk through today is I'm gonna show you all how I got all of the hex colors from the Sustainable Development Goals website. I'm gonna show you how I uh, created that JSON file. We will import the JSON file to Power BI, we'll customize the theme a bit, um, and then we will start putting things onto the canvas. So let's go ahead and jump into Chrome and we'll get started with the hex color picker. Here in Google Chrome, you can also do this in Edge. Um, I went ahead and just looked for a hex color picker. I've used many of these in the past, but I actually found that the hex color picker was a really neat one. So I added this as a browser extension to Chrome. You can see it right up here. And then what I did was I went over to a, one of the websites that has the SDG icons on it and I started building out my theme. So it's really actually super simple. Um, you take the eyedropper from the extension and you hover over, it's hard to do with my giant mouse, <laughs> but you hover over the color of interest and you can see that the hex code is displayed in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. But when you click on it, um, it will save it. And then what you get is in the extension, you can start to build out this palette. So I'll just do another one for demo purposes. Here I'm getting this goldenrod color. Then when I go back to the extension, I have the ability to save the um, theme, which is really nice. So let's walk through this just so you can see what's included in it. And what this does is it gives you just, you know, the different columns with the hex codes and the actual name of the color in it, which is really very nice. Um, and then what I did with this file, and here you can see, let's just make this bigger so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, so here in this file, I um, added a couple of columns that included the URL of the images. Um, so then I just brought in two files total into my report. Now that we have all of the hex colors that we're going to need for our palette, and in this case there are 17 of them, we're going to go ahead and create our JSON theme using the theme generator from PowerBI.tips. Um, this is a beautiful website. It works really nicely. It is free. Um, so. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, I'm going to just paste the contents of that column into the multiple input field. So here are all of my hex codes. I'm going to click add. These are now all of my colors and I, they are correct. And then I'm just going to click download theme. You can name your theme, so I'll call this SDG. We'll go ahead and download. And this is going to produce a JSON file for you. You can open this up in you know, whatever application you prefer on your computer. I like to work in VS Code, but the default here is Notepad, which is just fine. And what you can see here is um, you have your the name of your theme, um, and then you've got all of your data colors here with the visual styles. Now, if you are more comfortable working in JSON than I am, you can customize this theme much further. You can customize with fonts and sizes and um, different uh, default styles for the visualizations. I am not that advanced, so this is as far as I took this. And then I simply save it to import into Power BI. Here in Power BI, there is a really simple way to import the theme on the View tab of the ribbon, Browse for Themes. Here you can import a theme, so you'll grab that straight from your downloads, import and click OK. I have already done that in this case, so I'm gonna cancel out. What you are going to then see is if you go to customize the current theme, 
you'll notice that the colors that we input are displayed. Um, I then like to go in here and bump up the font sizes to make 12 the minimum because that is the, uh, you know, what is readable to the human eye on a website. And then I also went ahead and changed all of the font families to this Sego UI. It is the closest font that exists in Power BI um, to the what the SDG indicators use on their website. You'll go ahead and click apply and then the theme is applied <laughs> to your entire report so that these become the default colors in any visual that you choose. Um, so if you go, oh, we got to drop some data in here to make this happen. Um, but what you'll be able to see is that if you go to adjust the data colors, for example, um, all of your theme colors appear here. Now that our Power BI um, canvas or report is ready to build, we've got one final step and that is we need to get the URL for each of the icons into our um, image dimension. And let's just take a look at the final result. And what we've got here is this should look familiar. So the RGB hex, the HSL, the RGB, the HTML keyword, these all come from our hex color picker. Then we are going to add the URL for the image and the alternate image. For the image, I found these all just online, uh, straight from the website. For the alternate image, I actually cut these out of the 2021 SDG report. They have some really cool infographics in there. Um, you'll notice that some of the infographics in the report are not, you can't interact with them. They're just static images and those come from here. I actually created these URLs using this postimage.org. So we'll take a look at that as well. But first let's just take a peek at one of these URLs so you can see where I got these from. So back over on the UN website, what I did was I found a page that that displayed all of the indicators. And with each of those indicators, I went to open the image in a new tab. So for example, the UN uh, high quality version of the UN logo is here. Then this, this URL, which is an SVG image, that is what you are going to include in your data file. So for example, um, here I'll just create an image column. I'll paste that URL. Okay, then there is one additional step. So after you've got the URLs for all of your images, both your images for the icons and then your secondary images, back in Power BI, you need to select the image field over here on the right hand side. You're then going to go to the data category up here on the ribbon and you are going to select image URL. If you don't select this, you're not going to see the image as an image, you will see it as just the text URL. So this, this piece is critical. Last but not least, what I wanted to show you all with the images that I used as the secondary image. So that would be this image here uh, that's next to the text. Uh, what I did was I actually took screenshots of the PDF report. I thought this would be another interesting way for us to work with the images. So you can do this in whichever tool you like. I personally use Snagit, but you can also do it in PowerPoint. Just make sure that you've got a decent resolution that you're looking at on the screen. Go ahead and take a screenshot of the image that you want. Go ahead and save it as an SVG image. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to go to an additional website. And here I used a website called postimages.org. There are others that you can use. I would say be really careful with doing anything like this. People may have a better way and I actually welcome you to drop that in the comments if there's a better way to create URLs of your images, but this was the best way that I found. So what I did was I actually put all my images in a folder, I selected the images and then it spits out the URLs for them. I then dropped those URLs into my dim image table here and you can see these are, are the links to the alternate images. You may have to play around with this a little bit to get it 
the images in a resolution that is high enough quality for the report. Um, took me a minute to do this, but you're welcome to either use the, the same links in your report um, or not. But I just wanted to show that's another method of getting high quality images into Power BI. We aren't going to spend much time actually building together here in Power BI because we've already accomplished our goal, which was creating our custom theme. We've also worked with some images, but I do want to show you a couple of just tricks that I used to make this report function in the way that it does. So you can see that I've got some um, custom formatting going on behind the scenes with the backgrounds of the images. And then actually I have a shape behind this text box and that's how all of the colors change together. So I'll show you how I did that. Let's start there. The first thing that you, you'll need to do is select any of your items on your report page. On the general tab under the formatting here, um, I believe it's under effects. I went ahead and turned the background on. I set the color of the background to the color based on the field value. So there's a bunch of different options that you have here. I use the field value and I use the field value from my dim image table where I had the actual hex code. So I just set it to the RGB hex. It's fine that it's the first one. Um, it's saved as a text field and that's why it's calling it the first one. That's completely fine because there is only one. Um, and then I set the transparency here to, to 30%. Uh, it was just a little intense being uh, completely bright. So I set it to 30%. And that is how I did the custom formatting. Um, the other thing that I did want to mention is what visuals I'm actually using here. So for the very first um, STG logo, this is simply I imported an image. So if you go to insert on the home tab of the ribbon, insert an image, you can just grab an image from a file. Here I've got a text box. You will notice that behind the text box, I'm just going to turn on the selection pane so we can see what's going on here. Behind the text box, there is actually an image, uh, sorry, a shape. Just zoom in here. This is a shape. And on that shape is where I have the color applied. So the text box is white and it is on top of the shape. That's how I did that. Um, with the picker for the indicator, for this, I used a custom visual called the Collage by CloudScope video, uh, visual. There are a number of different ones that you can try. You could also just do this using a slicer. I didn't have success with the uh, being able to customize the formatting as much as I wanted, so I used this Collage by CloudScope visual. Just a quick reminder, you can get more visuals here, and you'll be able to select you know, whichever custom visual you want. Um, I also used a custom visual for the image, the alternate image, and for this one, this is just called simple image, um, and then you pull in the URL, and there you get your image. Then here I've got just a table visual, and I, I wasn't in love with how the header was appearing. I wanted the target to show, and you can see here I've made a, a mistake with my sizing. So let's pick a different one <laughs> that hopefully looks better. Um, okay, so here I used a text box with that is dynamic. Um, so it's got that smart narrative feature in it so that it changes with my selection. And then I've just got a simple matrix visual. So as you navigate between the different goals, you will see that the text here changes. So that is the solution for this week. Thanks so much for joining us. Just a quick reminder, once you have completed the challenge, we encourage you to share your work. Also fill out the submission tracker so that we can count you as a participant. Um, and additionally, I've got the solution file here in the post. So if I did not explain something clearly and you'd like to see how I did it, you can download this file and take a look uh, on your own. So thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.